Welcome back. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing Native American landscapes. So I'm going to basically just, again, come up with something in my head. Um, But I'm thinking more so Southwest landscapes. So we're going to be taking a look at my palette here. We're going to be using... I know this got messed up. (laughs) I know my red got splattered everywhere. We're going to be using red, yellow, green, brown, black, blues, and white. So pretty much every color. Um, But I do want to emphasize that it'll be a a lot less blue than you think. Because again, this is Southwest Native American landscape. So the first thing I want to do is um, I want to kind of get a base color for... Uh, my landscape but I'm thinking about my sky and so when I'm traditionally thinking about my sky I think about uh, a light blue sky that's mixed with blue and white but for this guy I want to actually make it untraditional or a little bit more sunsetty ish I like to say um, sunset but sunsetty ish is my new word for 2020 so I'm gonna be like oh look there's a sunsetty ish Okay, anyway, let's go. So first, I'm going to mix my yellow and my red. So as you can see, I'm mixing my yellow and my red. And I'm coming up with an orangey color that I want to kind of be the base for my sky. So I'm just going to probably put a little tiny bit of water in it. Now, today I'm working with a canvas. Before I wasn't, I was actually just working with a foam board. But today I actually upgraded myself to an actual stretched canvas, canvas board. So that's actually a pretty color, I think. Oh, I want to make sure everybody can see that. That seems to be a very pretty color. Not nice. background kind of landscape and again I'm not like I'm just simply brushing but the color is actually kind of like creating itself as I go because like I said I just have these two colors in my brush and it's simply creating my sky so I like the fact that it's creating my sky and very pretty nice fashion. Oh, and I wanted to talk about painting the edges because usually I don't necessarily paint my edges of the painting, but some people do, and it's actually a good practice to actually do especially if you don't intend on framing it or anything like that. So um, on this particular painting at the end, I will be painting the edges. So again, I'm just getting all that paint off the brush and you know that it's just red and yellow on the brush. And because they're on the brush together, so we have this orange kind of sky that we're kind of creating. But I'm actually going to add a little bit of brown when I get more so towards the, the bottom of the canvas, which will be the ground. Okay. So I'm going to take some brown there. Um, I'm just going to kind of mix in here with the yellow. And then I'm going to actually start seeing how far I want to go down. Just kind of marking out where I want to kind of start this medium brown. And then from here, it just kind of, it's going to get a little bit darker. But we are going to be adding a river too in this one. So that's going to be nice as well. Okay. All right. So again, now I'm just mixing yellow and the like reddish brown right here um, to get this kind of color. I like to call almost sunset, <laughs> but not quite. Yeah, a little bit of brown. Now I'm gonna go and get a lot more brown up here, and I'm just gonna add to already here. So we're making a darker shade of what I kind of already had right here. So 
この辺ですね。And、there here. As you can see, as they get towards the bottom, it gets a little bit darker. You can see the brown, the brown becomes more apparent. Okay. I know some of you guys are now like, oh my goodness, the steps we have to go through. Yes, there's many steps, but there's many steps for a reason. And that reason being is because when you look at creation, it's some things have so much detail. You're like, how could, how could that, you know, that be? And there's a process, but a lot of people don't remember the processes of many things. They don't remember everything comes to you with it. It's a process to get there, even if it's a short process or a long process. There's a process. So, okay, let me continue. Stop yapping. But here, mix these two together. Okay, and then when I get even closer to the bottom, I just I want to have a lot of that the darker on my, my brush. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here. You see now, it, I want it to still look like, well, you know, in the southwest, yes, there's, of course, there's. In the southwest, of course, there are,、um, you know, vegetation. There's cactuses. There's other、um, forms of,、um, you know, vegetation、um, besides cactus that that grow. And we might get into a couple of a couple of those、um, forms with this painting, or we might not. But.、Um, One thing for sure, I did want to emphasize、um, that in order to, because it's going to be a Native American landscape, in order to understand it, like how the people eat, we want to show that in the painting as well. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to map out specifically where I want one of, or and actually a couple of my. Teepees to go on the painting. So, because I don't want to actually like just paint it the whole thing as I go, I'm just kind of mapping out、um, where that is so I can go on to other things and then come back. I just want to kind of use a smaller brush. You don't have to use a bigger brush for this. When you just want to map out something, you can use a thinner brush, right? But you still want to, don't make it too thin because you still want to be able to see where everything is. So, I'm just going to dip my water in my. That didn't make sense. So I'm just going to dip my brush in the water. And then I go to the black paint and I lightly touch it because I'm just drawing. I don't, I want it to be like watercolor. Okay. Almost like when you have a calligraphy pen. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of map out where I want my teepees to go. So I'm going to go, you know, I don't want to be here. Like、I definitely know I, I want one to be here.、Okay. But a teepee first, it looks like a kind of a cone shape.、Okay. So if you just start with a cone shape, I know you probably can't see this good here. Yeah, let's see if we can darken it up for the camera.、Um, so if you're just looking at a Cone shape, and if that's just what you're talking about, then that's all you have to start with for the teeth. Okay, now I'm going to draw a couple more of these and then let's go on to something else. But there's going to be another one right here, and you won't see the whole thing because it's going to be partially obscured on this side. So、there's going to be another one there. Okay. But then, you know, they do go up like that too. Okay. So this little V that I'm drawing above it, we know those are going to be there as well. And then there might be another one. 
find it in this area. Now, I know that you're like, oh, they don't look perfect. Or, no, they're not supposed to look perfect. They're not supposed to look perfect. You're just trying to draw them down where they are. Where they are. Now, I want to skip back to the background here because the last painting we did, we did birch trees, which birch trees we know are white and then they have black spots. This particular painting, we're going to be making evergreen trees. So evergreen trees, of course, we have my light green right here, my darker green right there, and then my black. That's the primary colors we're going to use here. Although this is the Southwest, there are still trees. There's still trees other than cactus type trees. Okay, So I'm going to go get some black, get some green. And these are going to be in the background, so these aren't going to be alive. So I'm just going to do this. Okay, just making little marks to kind of where they would be. I also have some smog in my painting too, but I'll tell you about that. Okay, so when we think of Christmas time, that's when you're thinking of evergreen trees. So if you know what a Christmas tree is, you know what an evergreen tree is, and it will be essential for you when you want to paint landscapes because there's a percentage of landscapes that always have evergreen trees. No matter where you are, they have those evergreen trees. So, for time's sake, I'm just going to kind of speed it up, but once you see the evergreen trees and where they are and the marks the way I'm making them, um, you'll like to make a lot of paintings with those trees. So, I am going to actually change up um, height and kind of, it's not going to just like continuously go up over here, um, but they are going to be behind kind of this area. There's a little bit of smog. Part of your trees might be engulfed in that. So you might have lighter parts. Where you'd be like, why is the trees lighter there and then they're darker? Well, it might be because there's smog. Okay, and if this, this could be winter but you still have these beautiful sunsets in winter. Okay. But for my painting, it won't be winter, but it could be. Okay, okay so I'm going to kind of put that smog area down here because I know it's going to be there for pretty much the whole painting. But you want to make a lot of trees, so you're going to have to sweep down a lot. And again, these are some of them are going to go behind the, the uh, teepee, so you just want to kind of be careful. Don't go all the way to the edge, so you can still kind of see the top of where the teepee is. trees I'm going to almost put almost black because I want them to kind of pop out from the others but you'll see why in a second because there's going to be something called highlights
So now I'm going to go in with a very, very light green. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow this time. Because I want to actually put highlights on here just to show so when that sun comes in, you know that it's still there down the tree. So I'm going to go on some of the sides, I don't go on every side. And it shouldn't be the same opaqueness on each tree. I want to kind of differentiate a little bit. Okay, so I put a few more. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually go back into the T-piece just so we can kind of get that base color on there. So I'm going to take another brush. Okay, this is a nice size brush to do it. And then I have this very kind of tannish brown here. Now, if you don't have tan, you could just simply mix yellow, white, and brown and kind of get a tannish color. But I'm going to take this color because I just like it. I'm just kind of testing it out. It's actually called, let's see, what do we have here? Okay, from Apple Barrel, it's called khaki. Yeah, given it's a, the color of like khakis, like tan khakis. All right, so I'm going to go in. I'm just going to kind of separate the color here so I don't want to confuse part of my sky that I kind of have from over here. With the rest of my paintings, I'm going to cover that up so just for confusion's sake. But I'm not going to go into any detail right here. So as you can see, again, um, this is a canvas, but this is not something expensive to do at all. So you never have to worry about that. All right, so I changed the lighting just so you guys can see it better. So now the tan's actually popping out. So the next thing I want to take a look at is just, again, continually covering these two pieces. Okay, so try to get as close to the lines um, as you possibly can, and I'll tell you why in a second. So right now it looks like it could be pyramids, it could be um, but these are my remaining three TPs. Now some people like to do more. I'm not gonna do more for the sake of time. Um, but you could definitely do more TPs if you want it. Okay, so again, covering that. Pieces here, and I'm also just gonna go back and just point out my tips for my TP. So my two big wooden spikes that kind of make that X for the TP. I'm just gonna highlight it. So 
So let's go back to the land. I want to fill that in because I just don't feel right about the white being there. So I'm just going to go to red and then yellow. But I'm going to actually add some of the sand, some of the TP color into my red and yellow this time. So I'm going to take the TP color and the red and yellow and kind of mix those together. And then I'm going to now put my sand. So my, my land is almost the same color as my sky, essentially. And it's the reflection of the sky on the land that's actually making it that color also. So think about that um, when talking about this. But I do want to make this tanner. So I'm going to take a actually add a little bit of white to this. Okay. I know that's unorthodox. I know it's untraditional. Um, and then I'm going to add it on top of what I already had. Because I kind of want that white to somehow pop out. I might even leave that streak there. Right? So we know like the land streaks different. Okay. But again, I'm going to get some of that tan in there actually in the teepees as well because a lot of the teepees mirrored the color of the land. So wherever the land, if it was green, we have more green in the teepee. But definitely make sure you can see where the teepee is. Don't make it the same exact color. And sometimes you might you might just need a break. Like you might be painting, you'd be like, oh my arm needs a little and that's okay. Just take a break. You know? Alright, so we're kind of just still getting that land. And you're like, oh I hope my my teepees don't fade in with the rest of the well that's why we mapped it out in the beginning, so you see. Because um, you knew it might fade in with the land. So there's a trick to make that pop out. Okay, we're going to go through that in just a sec. So we got our three TPs, we got our background, we have our, our foreground. Um, but what we don't have is actual um, things popping out of this. So let's work with that next. First thing I want to jump to is the shadowing for the TP. So depending on where the sun's hitting, let's say my sun is over here and I want it to hit here. If my sun's hitting here, then the, the light should be shining on the TP should be on the side where the sun is, not the opposite side. So let's first start with some white. And then that TP color. So I'm just going to take the TP color and some white, because it has to be lighter. So we need white, that's all we need white. Mix it together. And I'm just going to kind of add a highlight. But notice I'm not like doing a whole bunch. I'm going to start with the, the base color first. 
And this is my first island. No, my first island. So you can even see that now popping out here. So remember, if we set the light to come in here, then we know that whatever we put in the sky, which would probably be more yellow, would be in this corner there. Go ahead and continue to color a little bit more. gradually use more water to to actually make more of my shadow because I want to give it the 3d fill so the only way I can do that is if it lightens more and more and more as gradually as it gets to the middle but never go further than the middle okay so I'll show you what that means so I'll just put more water on my brush I didn't put more paint I just kind of dragged it a little bit So it's it making it softer so it doesn't it be as much. So I'm gonna get a little harsh of a line. So the water makes it softer so it's not as harsh of a line. So I'm doing the same thing here with this. So for for these two, I mean for all three, especially these two, I want to actually go in and make the highlight a little bit more apparent. So I'm just going to take my white. This time I'm going to go on the side of the whole um, two by four, I like to call it. You see the two two by fours that are sticking out at the top for the TP um, to make the TP symbol. I'm just going to take a, some white on my paint and just run it across the whole top. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So this is going to cause that. There's also going to be a couple of highlights. Uh, so I'm also going to put a rock here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this white as well. And then we're going to go ahead and use. So we're giving it a little bit more texture. I'm gonna put some down here. I actually want to do this almost throughout. So I don't want this to just be a part. I want this to go all the way down, even to the part. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is then make the light in the sky. So I'm gonna take a lot of yellow. So we're just hoping that our yellow breaks out. want the yellow to break out here and then this will probably make clouds or seem like it's making clouds so the next thing I'm going to do is make the entrance to the TP and I'm just going to take some black right here and kind of map out where I want that to be so, so the whole stuff there, here, the whole stuff there. And actually, I'm just going to make this more of a 
Then we're gonna have another one. Just about right here. Okay. Contrary to that, I also want to have the shadow kind of be highlighted as well. So let's go in. Using the dark sand. Let's take some brown too. So we haven't took any brown too much yet. Kind of have it. So I know basically what I do. So again, actually, I just took the brown and the black and kind of just mixed them together and added water. That's pretty much how I got the shadow to the viewers at home. So black, brown, mix it together. Oh, and a little bit of the TP color, which would be the sandy tan slash khaki, khaki. Okay, so as you can see, I'm still just doing the shadows for the teepee. Again, the color is black, brown, tan, and a little bit of water will make those shadow colors. So that's all we need for those shadows. Oh, and if some of you are wondering, and everybody's like, where'd you get that hat from with the like raccoon on it? Yeah, well, my mom gave me this hat. She's so sweet. Um. But I love it. This is so cool. Um, and it's, I do believe, yes, it's a raccoon of some sort, but I look like, I don't know, Jenny Appleseed or John Deere or something. Um, but I really think it's really nice. Okay. So. And so this shadow isn't going to be this solid. I'm going to add in um, the, more of the tan color, more of the, the actual sand color in a second. But I kind of want to do have, I did want to have that kind of mapped out though. Um, so people could kind of see, oh yeah. It does kind of, your shadow should form whatever is cast in the shadow. So because this is cast in the shadow, it doesn't have to be perfect, like mine are perfect dimensions, but you still want to have it. Then you know that there should be an X forming here. Oops. Okay. And then actually here it didn't work out, so we got kind of I'm taking my finger and I'm also smearing it with my fingers. 
Especially along the edges, I want to do that as well. Okay, so I'm just like kind of smudging the edges. I don't want a perfect line. I want to kind of make it, it should look like a shadow. So our goal now is just to kind of get it there. And again, I'm just make, mixing the white, the tan, a little tiny bit of red and yellow because we want it to be more light colors. And we're just going across our shadows lightly. And like I said, you can smear. So if I go across some lines here, I want to smear that. Okay. Okay, as it gets closer to that actual land, then you can incorporate the colors of what the ground looks brighter. You know, we had some yellow, so we had some red. So we will put that in. Again, use your hand to smear. Go back to the to the teepees for a second. I want to make another shadow mark so you can actually see that the teepees around it. Like we know that we see the light, but then we want to actually make some dark as well. So this part, if we can, the light's here, then we know this side should be darker. So I go along, and I want to make it a reddish color. Dark first, and then we can talk about. I'm going to smear it with my hand as I put it on the side. Okay. So, let's go in with that red again. Okay, I'm going to put some more water in my brush because this smear should be an actual. Not a smear campaign, but it should look like it's smeared. Okay. And I'm just using my hand to kind of smear it. actually want to add the color blue to this picture and I'm going to do that by the door so first let's put some blue on my palette because I didn't have any on my palette for this picture I'm going to be putting dark blue and light blue first I'm going to start with the darker blue and I'm just going to basically cover That blue so it's very powerful right now and you see as you can see it's popping out really quick but that's what I want for the base first okay. pure blue Now I'm going to go with my light blue right there, and I'm going to actually put that on top. Okay, so we're going to lighten the doors. Okay, but not too much. So we're going to start with here, lightly. The next thing that I want to do, and kind of like our fi our final thing for this particular picture, doesn't mean that our other pictures will have more, um, is add a river. So we know that a river can cross anywhere, but I reckon this river is going to kind of 
ease its way through here. And it's actually going to take up a significant point of the picture. So I'm going to first kind of outline where I want it to be. I'm going to take a black and a blue. I don't want it to be straight blue for the starting line of it. And I'm going to So most people are like, well, there's not too many rivers in the southwest. Well, my picture wants to have a little one. It's not going to be thick or anything. It's going to be skinny. Um, but we're still going to have one. Okay, and this is useful because we know people want to have access to water, clean water at that, right? And so by putting it behind the trees is okay because we know usually water is near trees. So it works. Okay, so I'm also just go in and I'm just going to fill this up with my blue. But the color is going to change. Just that. Just that little bit. We know there's a river, we know there's usually, um, I'd probably like to say some type of vegetation. So we are going to put some shrooms kind of around where the river is. Now there's going to be a little bit of water that kind of pops up here and there. But usually this will be shrooms because we're going to make this kind of nature. Some vegetation. Okay, so I'm going to take some green. Some black. Okay, so we now have kind of extended our lane through here as well. Okay, so some more vegetation. Which I think helps support the realistic aspect. So now I'm going to go in and put some more white highlights in the actual water. So, some are going to be towards. So I'm going to make some highlights towards the area where we know there's a lot of sun. And then I'm going to go with some dark blue and then kind of go back over. So 
some of the areas here. I do have them a little bit of lead gray now, which is just green and yellow for my last thing before I sign it in. Kind of be this land in here. So now I think of it, this is desert. Well, it's hitting desert, but then at the same time, we're going to put some actual vegetation in there. Now again, we still might have a lot of the sandy color that they have. Like still here. There you go. Uh, episode two of Painting with Billy Jackson. Our Native American 3TP scene. Now of course you can jazz it up, make it more um, with designs and things like that. Um, for now I am going to sign my name.